In the last section, we finished up our pre-deployment checklist. This list of four steps right here are steps that you'll have to repeat on any Node.js project that you ever want to deploy to Heroku. And so it might be a good idea to print out this or save a copy of this diagram. Remember, you can access all the diagrams from this course on the GitHub repo matching up with the course. And a link to that is inside of the course resources document, which you can find in the very first lecture in this course. Now that we've gone through this pre-deployment checklist, we can start to go through the actual deployment process. So we're gonna go through this list of steps right here to handle our first time deployment. And then we'll go through the list of steps to figure out how we would do subsequent, subsequent deployments or redeploy our application after we make some changes at some point in the future. So step one is to create a Heroku account. Easy enough, let's get to it now. Inside the next step is to commit our code base to Git. So by default, Heroku uses a Git-based deployment procedure or a Git-based deployment workflow. All we have to do is commit our code base to Git. Now, when I say that, I intentionally say it somewhat ironically because just saying all we have to do is commit our code base to Git is actually, at the end of the day, a lot more confusing than you might think. So I am gonna say that this is really not a course about Git per se, so we're not really gonna cover Git in great detail, but I am gonna give you at least the steps to do this from scratch, assuming that, assuming that you've never used Git in the past before. So the first thing we're going to do is verify whether or not we have Git already installed on our local machines. To do so, I'll change back to my terminal and I'll run the command git-v, like so. Now, dash v is not an actual command, uh, my mistake, we probably want dash dash version, <laughs> much better, okay. Now when we run this command, we should see something that says like, hey, here's the version of git you're running. If you get back something that says unrecognized command git, that's totally fine. It means that you have to install git before you can actually use it. Now installing git is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna change back over to my browser. I'm gonna open up a new tab and then search for install git. And then one of the first links that you should see pop up should be git-scm.com slash downloads. We'll click on go to download, and then you'll see some directions right on here for installing Git, no matter what operating system you're currently using. And so at this point, I'm gonna kind of let you follow through this, all right? So if you do not have Git installed, please walk through the uh, respective installation steps for your operating system. By the time you're done, you should be able to run the command git dash dash version at the command line and see a version be printed printed out to you now if you are running a newer version of git that's totally fine don't sweat it okay so now that we have git installed we are going to create a new local repository and commit all of our server code to the repository so inside of my server directory we're going to run the command git init now when i run this command you're going to see initialize empty git repository and then the directory that you're in at present we're then going to commit all of our code to this directory or excuse me to this git repository by running the command git add dot and then git commit dash m and it will give it the message initial commit like so after we do that we should see a short message telling us all the different files and folders that we have committed now, if you set up the git ignore file correctly, you should not see node modules on this list right here. So at this point, you should only see like three or four listings and you should not see node modules on this list. Okay, so let's go back to our workflow. I'm gonna pull my diagram up. So we have now created our Heroku account. We have committed our code base using Git. The next step is going to be to install the Heroku CLI and create a new Heroku application. So this step right here is gonna be just a little bit more involved, but we do have a great installation guide for the Heroku CLI. Now the purpose of this Heroku CLI, by the way, it's a command line interface that we will use to generate a brand new Heroku project. So I'm going to open up another new browser tab. I'm going to search for Heroku CLI. And then you should see one of the top links on here will be a help article on Heroku CLI published at heroku.com. So I'll click on this and then it's gonna give us some very detailed installation directions for each operating system that you might be using. So in my case, on my browser, I'll open up a new tab and then navigate to 
heroku.com. Now on the landing page that pops up, you can find the sign up button on the very top right. Go ahead and click it, and then you can fill out the required information to create a new account. Now Heroku might require you to access your email and say like, you know, click on some uh, verification link inside your email. So if it does, make sure you hop over to your email account and click that link. Once you've gone through that process, you can sign into your account. Now I have already created an account myself, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in like so. Now this is kind of a, uh, let's say hobby account of mine. So I don't really have a lot of serious projects inside of here. It's a lot of test projects that I've worked on in the past and just kind of deployed and threw out there. So I don't really have that much that's super important in here. So all we have to do at this point is create the account and sign in to make sure that our account is working. Then I'm on Mac OS. And so I on Mac OS can use Homebrew to install Heroku. Now to be clear, this does assume that you are already using Homebrew. So this is where we kind of go down like this rabbit hole of installation directions. So I'm just gonna say this one very quick thing. If you are on Mac OS, you might want to install Homebrew. There's a link to it right here. I'll open it on a new tab, and then I can copy this link right here and paste it at the terminal. You can do that to install Homebrew, and then after running that, you can run brew install Heroku to actually install the Heroku CLI. Now, if you're on Windows, you can just go ahead and download the installer right here. And also, by the way, if you don't want to install Homebrew, you can grab the Mac OS installer right here as well. So, totally up to you. Okay, so after you go through that installation process, we should then be able to run the command Heroku-V at the command line, and then see some version of the CLI printout, like so. Okay, so let's pause right here because I anticipate that installing the CLI might be a little bit troublesome. If you are having any issues installing the CLI, feel free to pause the video right now and just ask me a question. Let me know, hey, what error are you getting? Make sure you tell me what error you see and I'll do my best to help you get this installed. So at this point, let's take a quick break and when we come back, let's make sure that we have the Heroku-V command working. So I'll see you in just a second. 